What do you mean you've been broke since 78? I don't have, we don't have money. You think athletes have money? Bro, do you think athletes have money? And the reason why that was important to me is because I was trusting me. I was trusting image. I was trusting my money. I was trusting my credit score. I was trusting title and position and status. But once you realize as you get older, which is the weirdest thing about getting older, it's not like you don't have the same feelings of insecurity and indifference when you're younger. You just don't handle it differently later on in your life. And handling it different today, I'm seeing Chad Johnson handling life differently. And uh, funny thing, what age does to you, it has you see things from a different perspective because you have experience through the good and the bad. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapali here. Haley and Tia from Dallas, Texas. And we have another reaction video for you. After last week's Rick Ross reaction video, while he was on the I Am Athlete podcast, another character that I, did, I didn't know was on the I Am Athlete podcast named Ocho Cinco. And uh, this guy's made a little over $48 million in his entire career through the NFL. And obviously made millions and millions of dollars through endorsements and, and, uh, and brand deals. And I just thought it was pretty interesting how him and my conversation with Deion Sanders about branding yourself, about having this persona, about wealth and uh, the projection you put out there of success and what it means in reality when it's all said and done and you got to live the rest of your life from life after the spotlight. So in this video, I'm going to react to Chad Johnson's appearance on the in-depth with Graham Bengtsiger and the title of this video, I've been broke since 1978. Let's check this out. How are you doing financially? I've been broke. <laughs> I've been broke since 78. <laughs> no. I've been broke since he was what born. No. What do you mean you've been broke since 78? I don't have, we don't have money. You think athletes have money? Well, do you think that athletes have money? Obviously, a lot of people think that athletes have money. A lot of people think that celebrities have a lot of money. A lot of people that actors and actresses and people out there have a lot of money. What do you think? Is your projection and persona of athletes and these type of people, do you think they have a lot of money? Really, do you think so? Because broke, in my opinion, it's a mindset. It's a temporary disposition. So let's see how he unveils this throughout. You made a fortune during your football career. No, dude. The people signing the check have a fortune. Well, okay, it's all <laughs> relative, but to you know, 99.9% .9 of the population, you were making a okay. fortune. Maybe not compared to the billionaire okay. NFL owners, but 99% of the population. Where you're I'm making from? A, right. Perspective. I'm not rich, or I'm not well, I'm, I'm well off, if that's what you say it. How many, how many think that? making a million dollars today is like a big deal. Okay, because one of the biggest pushbacks I, I've gotten in comments, because we read them and we respond to them as much as we can, is when I made the comment that a million dollars a year is no big deal, making a billion dollars is a billion dollars is no big deal. Some of you guys had this knee jerk reaction. What's this clown talking about? Well, when you stretch your mind and surround yourself with people who have a whole lot more money in this world and have a lot more success and have the big checks according to what Chad, Johnson was talking about, you tend to say, you know, I thought I was big from where I'm from, I'm well off, but you know, I'm around a lot of wealthy, rich people, man, what I think I'm making is a lot of money compared to where I used to come from, may not be a lot of money. You know, this makes me reflect upon our guys in our firm, because a lot of guys in our firm, they make 100,000 a year, 150, 200,000 dollars a year, they hang their head around us because I'm only making 100,000 a year, I'm only making 150, 200,000 dollars a year. Why? Because they're around guys that make a lot more money. And so therefore, you know, John Maxwell's got this book called 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And number one, first law is law of the lid. In other words, if you're on people making 20 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, 25 grand a year, 50 grand a year, and you think that's a lot of money, that's the lid. The question for you is, are you hanging around people with such a low lid? Because once you start hanging around with people who have more net worth and success, boom, the lid gets higher, the lid gets higher, the lid gets higher. And the lid gets so high, you think that where you used to come from, man, that's no big deal. That's what Chad Johnson is trying to say, and that's what I've meant in previous videos. Listen, I used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And uh, because I started hanging around with a lot more different type of people, which I hope that you are too as well after watching these type of videos, inspires you to hang around with people that make a lot more money than you do and uh, uh, that have better marriages and they have better relationships in their life and you aspire to have that too as well. I hope that you start hanging around those people so therefore you don't think it's a big deal when it's really not. Come on. I'm well off. And you're still well off today. Yeah, I'm cheap. You haven't followed me over the years. Hey, your friend, uh, Trent, who I was talking to said, um, you know, when you guys will go out to lunch, he will mm -hmm. 
he will force you to let him pay, pay sometimes, yeah. but everybody else you pay for. So you can't yeah, pay that it, cheap. It was, it, was, it, was, it was weird. Interesting. You go out to lunch to somebody, who do you expect to pay? Who do you expect to pay for? So you go out to lunch to somebody, do they pay for you or you pay for them? When you ask somebody out to lunch, I'm just curious, what, what do you think? What do you, what do you put? What's your etiquette? What's your protocol? Put it in the comment section below of who pays for lunch when you invite somebody out, okay? Because as you're putting your comments, though, in the comment section below, as you're responding in the comment section below, here's what I do. For the person that's mentoring me, if a person is mentoring me, for the rest of their lives, they'll never have to pay for anything for the rest of their lives if I'm still around. If I'm in proximity of them visually, they'll never have to pay for lunch, They'll never have to pay for a round of golf. As much as I think I play golf, I don't. Uh, as, as much as we uh, spend for things out and souvenirs and shopping, et cetera. If they have to buy something, I want to step in and say, I want to buy that for you. Why? Because that person is mentoring me. Now, vice versa. If I, I also invite somebody out to lunch, if for example, I'm having a business lunch, not with a mentor, but somebody I'm looking to build a relationship with, somebody I'm looking to recruit, somebody I'm looking to become as a client, I want to recruit for my firm or have them as a client of our firm, I'm buying lunch. I'm, I'm, but not, not only do I buy lunch, I buy it with a special credit card for business expenses. And in buying lunch, I also show them what type of credit card I use because that gives them an idea what type of financial situation I'm in, what type of credit that I have to increase the value that I bring to the table if they decide to do business with me. I don't pay with the debit card. I pay with specific cards that, that help me get higher esteem, not only with them, but also for the, the restaurants I do business with too as well. So who pays for you or who do you pay for when you take people out to lunch? I'm curious. It was weird, but I am t the way I move, the way I live, the lifestyle I've lived over the years. I just noticed right now he's got no he's got no earrings, he, he's got no uh, chains uh, to begin with. I don't see a a, a fancy watch. Uh, is this because this is life after the NFL? If you followed me, even if you're a fan, you know, like I've always shown small instances. Like for instance, on Hard Knocks, shopping at Claire's, my jewelry has always been fake. Rolexes, there it is. diamonds, everything is cubic zirconia because it all shines the same when the light hits it. If you already have money, <laughs> there's no reason to buy anything real, which I've tried to explain. But you have like times. a dozen exotic cars, didn't you? Or, you know, a dozen. Hmm. Interesting. He said everything I bought is cubic zirconia because it all shines the same way in the light, especially from a distance. So is this persona? Is it, you know, for the show, for the flash? Uh, what do you guys consider? Do you want to buy real stuff? or buy fake stuff, it's for, it's, if it's for marketing, do you buy the real stuff or you buy the fake stuff? Now, Graham asked him a question about cars. I wonder what his answer is from here. Cars, some of which were exotic. Me? Yeah. I had a Ferrari, I had a Lamborghini and a Phantom. Ferrari, easy, 250. Uh, Lamborghini, easy, 250. Uh, Phantom, you're looking at a $400,000, $500,000 car. Uh, total, he had all up between 750 and a million dollars of exotic cars. What? was his way of acquiring and how you pay for it. All which were bought with TV money. There you go, bought with TV money, okay? Bought with TV money. So in other words, he created an asset, which was his opportunity to go out there and create extra cash, but he used that asset to invest in, sadly, depreciating items. Unless, of course, he bought these cars through his business, through his corporation for business purposes, which, of course, he can write off the depreciation. If you haven't seen it already, here's how you write off your car through a business, one of my favorite videos that I've done and how I ride around in a Rolls Royce for 24 bucks a month, which by the way, I bought this Rolls Royce from a former professional athlete, but if you haven't seen it right here, check it out. Okay. What, what is it like though when, you know, the, the football checks stop. obviously stop coming because yep. you're no longer playing, but the kind of day-to-day -day living expenses remain the same? That, um, Woo, think about that real quick. And, and regardless if you are a professional athlete or not, think about you right now. You're an engineer, uh, you're an artist, uh, you work for Jiffy Lube, I don't know, what, whatever job you have. So if your income is here and this interest rate environment and this recessionary environment triggers a recession and you lose your job, but your expenses are here, how fast would you start financially panicking? So in other words, if your checks stop coming in, but your expenses are still up here because your bills don't go away, What's your next move? Have you been planning for your next move? This case is a professional athlete. What's your next move after you're done playing, after you hang up the uh, helmet, after you hang up the cleats, and your income's still up here. You're spending $100,000, $200,000 a month on homes and property taxes and cars and gas and whatever your lifestyle is. When those NFL checks stop, what's your next move? 
And what's the stat? Within three years, four years, five years, 75% of all professional athletes go broke. They didn't have to though. So uh, interesting how this interview continues. My living expenses, my, my only overhead was child support, which is structurally done between myself and the mothers. Okay. That's my living expense. How many, how many kids does Chad Ochocinco have? Let's, let's Google this real quick. So seven kids, he's got seven kids. So to raise a kid from a financial standpoint, to raise a kid from birth to 18 years old is about a, approximately a quarter million dollars for one kid from birth to 18 years old. We're just talking about raising a kid. I'm not talking about child support. Listen, I've got five kids from 26 years old all the way down to three years old. I remember what it's like to be in child support court. I remember what it's like to be in family court when I had custody kid. And next thing you know, the judge says, you need to pay child support. Wait, so wait a minute, I got residential custody. Why am I paying child support, man? Why am I doing this? Well, oh, you have residential custody. Okay, let me reverse that son of a gun, right? These judges, right? So anyway, I know what it's like to be looked upon by a judge, to be looked upon in family court, to be forced to say, okay, you gotta pay this. Whole lot easier if you can work it out between the parents or even more so, make sure that you pick the right wife to have a baby with. Make sure you pick the right woman to have sex with. Here's what the Bible says about finding a wife. Proverbs 18, verse 22. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. But you gotta make sure you find the right wife. And you wanna, wanna have a checklist about what wife to follow? Look further in Proverbs chapter 31. It's a wife of noble character, not just hotness on the outside, but hotness on the inside of noble character not hotness on the outside. So something to consider on Proverbs chapter 31. For those of you looking for a checklist on who to marry, that's one way to go, but I hope they just have a checklist. If you don't want to use this, you find a checklist on who to marry. So therefore you don't settle and sadly marry and worse, have kids with the wrong person and have to deal with them for another 18, 19, 20 years for the rest of your life in child support court. That was always, that's, 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 that's all I have. I didn't have a house here, I didn't have a house there. Like, you don't understand how simple I really live. You know, there's a perception and then there's reality. So it was important to you to make smart financial decisions over the yeah. course of your- Yeah, I did, I did early. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't make any extremely bad ones because I didn't do any of those ridiculous investments. Mm -hmm. I didn't put money- I think the mistake he had with, which a lot of men do make, is the bad investment that you made is having kids with so many people. And uh, listen, I'm, a, I'm about fatherhood. I'm about being there for children. Now, I'm not assuming that Chad's not there for his kids, but there is a frustration when you have children with so many women. Why? Because they go home to the values and principles of the mother and they come to you with your values and principles. And if they're not aligned and they're not together, man, there's chaos with the kids. And the kids grow up with chaos and kids are like wondering what and who to follow. And so the reason why I say it is because my three older kids, there's chaos. Why? Because I have three kids with two different mothers and it's chaos. Uh, please let my mistake be your gift to not have sex and have kids with the wrong woman or ladies having sex with the wrong guy if you're watching this video. But there is huge benefit, massive benefit when you find the right wife. And uh, my wife now, Sheena, uh, she, she came in with a single as a single mom, she had a kid. I met Jojo when he was a year, year and a half old. And he, I've been his dad for the last 11 years. We have a kid together, Jordan, he's three years old today. I can't tell you how much peace these kids have knowing to come home to mom and dad, not moms and daddies, okay? There's something to be said when mom and dad, one on one, on one side, okay, one on each side, there's something to be said when mom and dad are in the same accord, anchored with the same values, beliefs, and principles, it really helps a lot of these kids. Like I was, I was extremely safe in, in a sense and didn't do anything crazy. What made you realize you needed to make those smart decisions? I don't know, I went through a phase. I went through a phase, that phase of mine was only two years. It got boring because the things that people like to do, I'm not even into it. I don't drink alcohol. So I'm not in the club popping bottles and spending 50K for a group of group of people. I didn't have an entourage. The entourage that I had. It's, it's amazing how popping bottles and clubs and lounges and all that stuff that that moment can cost so much money. You talking about dropping 50K in a club for one night? What do you have to show for it though? Okay, a good time, so what? Okay, experience one day, so what? The experience that just lasts one night. I'd rather have an experience that you can talk about forever that continues to have benefits of that conversation, benefits of that experience over and over and over again versus a lot of 
conversation over regret. I've never benefited much from the clubs. I've never benefited much from the lounges. I've never benefited much over alcohol. I don't know. That's me. What about you? I'm just curious. Have you benefited a lot from alcohol? Have you benefited a lot from lounges and clubs? For those in your 30s and your 40s, do you still remember the people you used to party with in your late teens, early 20s, clubbing on Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Do you still get value from that? Or do you get value from this phase that he talked about for two years? Do you get value from the new friends that you have that are settled down, have marriages, and are building a life? I'm curious. Please put it in the comment section below. Didn't even want to deal with me growing up as a kid and definitely didn't want to surround themselves around me once I made it because of the attention that they brought. So I didn't have to spend on them. So where's my money going? It's really nowhere for it to go. That's right. I'm not trying to live up to society standards. I was an oddball when I was playing. I didn't want to fit in with anyone else. Everything I did, I wanted to be over here on my own. By the way, man, just looking at his demeanor right now, it's so much different than when he was playing football, right? Talking about walking around with the, the gold jacket, Hall of Famer, the gold jacket walk around out there. I mean, that's what wide receivers do, right? They they're kind of have that personality. But to see this guy right now, so, such a different demeanor, this Ocho Cinco, this Chad Johns that I'm seeing right now in this interview, so much different than the guy who was playing ball in his prime. I was completely it's physical different. prime. And so, which is why I keep trying to explain how my transition really wasn't that difficult because I wasn't living crazy when I was making it. Why do you think the perception out there w was different? Because I made it that way, the way I played, you know? You know, that's a sad reality, man, is that the way you play, the way you get eyeballs, whether good or bad, the persona that you got to put out there, the cubic zirconia put out there, the jewelry, the exotic cars, the house, the persona out there gets eyeballs, gets eyeballs. I'm reminded of a proverb of who you should trust. It goes like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. And the reason why that was important to me is because I was trusting me. I was trusting image. I was trusting my money. I was trusting my credit score. I was trusting title and position and status. But once you realize as you get older, which is the weirdest thing about getting older, it's not like you don't have the same feelings of insecurity and indifference when you're younger. You just don't handle it differently later on in your life. And handling it different today, I'm seeing Chad Johnson handling life differently. And uh, funny thing, what age does to you, it has you see things from a different perspective because you have experience through the good and the bad. Lesson you've learned over the years about money and finance would be what? Money and finance, the best lesson. Just save it, period. It looks better coming in than going out. For sure. That's always, that's always, that's always been my thing. Always. How many guys agree with that? It always looks better in than coming out. But yet, everything that's out there is celebrated by all the stuff coming out. Think about this real quick. How many apps do you have on your phone to get your money? For you to send out money, how many apps do you have on your phone? You got Zelle, you got Cash App, you got Apple Pay, you got PayPal. You know, you have so many different ways. You got the banks to try to simplify the way you get money out of your checking account, right? So many different department stores, so many different apps for you to buy things through their app to get your money. Okay, so look at your phone. How many ways to get money out of your account is on your phone right now? Versus how many apps do you have on your phone? Or what is the usage of your phone to make sure you got money coming in versus out? If you got more apps on your phone to send money out versus strategies and ways for your money to come in, you already know you got to switch the way you approach money and finance. Listen, man, this brother was blessed. And for those of you receiving a blessing, uh, you have an opportunity to come away. It may not be $48 million. It might be $4.8 million. It may be $480,000. It may be $48,000. Either way, whatever you do with the least and you manifest and magnify it and you make the most of it, you can then be entrusted with the most. But if you are frivolous with the least and you just go out there and spend, you coming in, coming out, according to certain stats, 48% of people today in America are living paycheck to paycheck. Up from 28 to 39%, more people making $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. So you have to figure out what it is, what type of life that you want to live. If you're looking for strategies, you're looking for, for implement, please check out these videos right here. That being said, loving your thoughts, your comments, put in the comment section below. If you're watching this video and you feel that there's value added to this, please consider hitting like. And if you've watched a couple of our videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. That being said, guys, from Dallas, Texas, I'm a mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart and be money smart today.